As long as you put a smiley face or so or say something like no offense before you say something offensive, it's totally fun. Oh, okay. So if I say no offense, but you're probably the worst human being I've ever been in contact with. Can't get offended because you said no offense. No offense. Okay. What if but I say if what, what if I say don't take this the wrong way? Yeah, that's fine because like, like, I'm, I'm not allowed to take it the wrong way. <laughs> I like how if someone says, don't take this the wrong way, and they say it in the only way it could possibly be taken. <laughs> it's like, well. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way, but I know you think you're losing weight and look good, but you're still fat. But don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> and disgusting. Uh, <laughs> and unattractive. But don't take it the wrong way. Who is your daddy? I I'm your father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? All right. right. Well, let's get started with episode 156. We've got some games to talk about, I think. It's been kind of a crazy week, but I did get some gaming time in. My name's Tim. I'm here with Derek. Hey. And I know that last week uh, you weren't thrilled with our conversation about Kingdom Hearts 3, but I think it's because you weren't thrilled with the game Kingdom Hearts 3, and so our discussion about it probably didn't feel that great. But I actually thought uh, it was interesting to to evaluate one of the biggest uh, early game releases of 2019, and I have still been playing it, mm-hmm. and, I, and I like it, but the same things I said last week apply, and that is... It's got a lot of elements of repetition to it. A lot of the battles, especially now I just finished the Monsters, Inc. world. I just feel like a lot of the battles are getting very repetitive. The space stuff is all very repetitive. None of it's bad. Space stuff. I hate the space stuff. I, I know you do. And I don't. I know that you and I probably disagree on that. I don't think it's horrible. But after playing something, even like Starlink, I think Starlink is far superior in, in space battles. So, um, So anyway, all that to say, it still has some of the issues that i pointed out last time but it's still a very charming and pretty game and as a fan of most disney and pixar movies i've liked what they've included but here's something that i've noticed my wife actually watched part of it uh, i think the toy story land or something and she goes there's just something weird about the way they interact there's lots of weird awkward pauses and their reactions are a few seconds too late and it feels like that they're waiting for a translator to finish telling them what was said or something it just feels really weird and she's right. That is one element from this game that I feel like in 2005, when Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, that was understandable. In 2019, when we've had games like the Red Dead series and stuff like that come out, that even Ratchet and Clank, that had a much smoother experience in the, in the dialogue and the conversations and the reactions. In Kingdom Hearts 3, I feel like there's a lot of awkward moments with the cutscenes and stuff like that. I know that's part of the series. I just, I think. They should have had some of that cleaned up in 2019, but that's just my that's just my opinion. So I don't love it, but I know you said you've come around on it at least a little bit. Yeah, I think when I uh, I think I texted you when I was playing it, I was like, "Well, I don't hate it as much as I did before." But that's like the last time I played it. I played it for like an hour, and then after I texted you, I got to a ship portion and died, and I was like, "I don't know how to upgrade the ship." This, is, you know what? I hate <laughs> this game again. Um, so. Here's my thing. I think the combat is fun. I, you know, as I started moving and getting a little bit better at it, not that I was, I wasn't dying or anything. I wasn't like bad. I just didn't always fully understand everything. And it just felt like button mashing. Now I'm, it's still button mashing to me, but I am starting to get a little bit better flow to what's going on. You get better rewards and better combos for doing it the right way, but you really could just button mash and dodge this whole game. If you wanted to, you could do it that way. That's what it feels like. I, I like it. I, I don't know if I'll finish it because there's a bunch of great games coming out, and I don't think I like it enough to, to uh, play it again. You'd I don't probably know. finish it late summer if I had to guess. Yeah, that. it's one of those where it's like I started it, and I was like, hmm, didn't love this. But As you I start might- to clean up stuff for, towards the end of the year, second half of the year, I think you will. Um, but I think it's, it's an okay game, but that I only played a little bit this past week. So I don't have really anything new to talk about with that. Um, I really didn't play a lot of games. I played a little bit of red dead again, not going to talk about it. I just played a little bit. 
um i'll just play like a mission here and there and then i'm like okay i'll come back to you in two weeks and uh which that will probably be longer because february 15th is gonna kill me but um but the only thing is uh, besides rocket league that i've been playing is the division two beta which you and i can both talk about and i played a lot a lot of apex legends really which Yes, I had no idea I would play a lot, but I absolutely love that game. Really? Um, All right, let's yeah. talk about that for a second. So I, this is something I was going to talk about with news, but I'll go ahead and let you guys know. If you don't know about this game, this is a game from Respawn, the folks who are responsible for the Titanfall games. And this game was not announced at all. It was being developed in the background it is a free to play game where there's tons of stuff you can buy it's a it's a classic free to play model where mm -hmm. you can buy tons and tons of aesthetic stuff and i'm assuming loot box type stuff too i didn't see that but i'm, I'm assuming that's in there too um and they don't pull any punches about that hey this is free to play jump in and play it and feel free to buy all the aesthetics and dances and finish your moves that, that you want you can use uh real money to buy loot crates okay. i think you i think when you when you use your real money, it's their currency, but the currency is used to actually, you can say, I want that skin or I want Right, that yeah, I want to let me my gun look this way, my character look that way. There's yeah. two characters I that you have to buy. There's random boxes. Yeah, because so. so it comes with six characters available, and I think there's two that you could unlock with their in-game currency, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and if there's tons tip, of skins. Yeah. Pro tip, yeah. if you want one of those two characters and you want it, basically free this is what i did and this is what my uh pastor did too you just sign up for a month at ea access so it's five dollars or you can go on cd keys and usually get a, a month for like three bucks you you access ea access log into your xbox go into apex legends and it will give you one thousand which is ten dollars one thousand in currency for apex currency and then they give you a free skin for one of your guns that thousand uh, a, a new character is, is 750. So for 750 coins of your thousand, um, you can buy a, a character. So I bought one of the characters. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I, I actually got that uh, $5. because you could also be apparently game sharing with someone who has EA access because I got that exact thing when I fired it up. I got the gun skin and I got the thousand coins or whatever. And I did um, the EA access for and we'll probably talk about it at some point today um anthem anthem, anthem comes yeah. out february 22nd well, but for you it comes out access, friday i guess you and me it comes out friday so yes yeah, so friday i'll be able to play anthem as well i won't be playing I'll anthem i'll be playing far cry new dawn but i'll probably give it a whirl i'll try it we i'm much try to call out far cry new dawn i'd like to play that co-op oh yeah we should Why should we not? play video games together should we do that we can live stream it on so <laughs> so respawn launched this game it is a battle royale game i think it's one of those it's one of the many contenders trying to grab that crown away from fortnite which seems impossible with how big of a phenomenon fortnite is and it's exactly what it sounds like it is it is a fortnite clone in some ways you know it takes that battle royale format and you drop into this huge map and then this, the map gets smaller over time and you know you can be in a squad you could be solo and it whittles down to last person or team standing sure yeah bro eli doesn't want you to see him naked go okay. ahead boy cover it up you gotta you gotta cover it all the way up there you go i got it boy all right, go out here and see if you find one. Or just put on my Spider-Man outfit. I bet you will look cute in that. <laughs> Dude, you are freaking dead sexy, though. I feel like you're my son. You, you still feel sick? Yes. I was worried. You want a hug from Dada? No? Okay. I don't want to throw up. Okay, after you put a Spider-Man outfit on, if you look really cute, I need you to come over here. I want the three people that look at our YouTube channel to see how cute you are. Well, no, there's like well, three. Well, if we, use, if we use him in the Spider-Man outfit as the thumbnail, we'll get a lot more than three. It's true. What did you say, Eli? Is that like the first thing true you've ever said about your dumb show? Why is my show dumb? <laughs> Why are you a hater? Old man. <laughs> well, there's only two of us, and I'm 27. Tim's like 47. <laughs> No, he's like 50. <laughs> and you're like, you're like 50, Tim. Thank you. 
I'm not 70. <laughs> like, you this is stupid. You know how old I am. 27. Not 27. Not 27. All right, so back to what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, so about? so oh, it is a lot like back. Fortnite in that it drops you on the map. Map gets smaller over time. Oh, wait till Eli's done. What, bro? Can I do a recreation of your photo of a hotter version? Yeah, you can. Once you put it on, you're taking like three years to put it on. I don't want to get my foot on, okay? I'm being protective about this. Oh, yeah. Eli injured his foot. Oh. Like he split. You know how you got the skin in between? He split yeah. it. Oh, like a paper cut? How did he do that? So that's how you were jumping on a trampoline and they... No. I was sitting down and Caden jumped on it. Like literally his foot went in between my toes. Oh. It moved it. Uh. It moved it. More All right, stop time. talking. That's like and talking about. Suddenly... That sounds like a fake story. They were actually playing footsie barefoot. That right there. Oh yeah, yeah bro. Oh, Wait, he's got to get more in the light. Tell him to get closer. This is dad. Come here, boy. Shut uh, up. Hey, come here. Oh, this is yours. Oh, yeah, get the sexy. Oh, that's awkward. That's my chunk of phone. That's your fit. That's. <laughs> Okay, you're not even in the camera. Yeah, back that booty up, boy. Okay, Cameron. Okay. All right, say bye, Tim. I don't speak to losers. <laughs> uh, I can't even hate that. That was I respect that actually. That was, that was good. That was good. Uh, he's my son. He's all me. Oh. Good night, so, boy. I love you. Speaking of Eli, he loves Fortnite. This game's a lot like Fortnite. It really is. So you drop onto the big map and you go, you find your weapons, find your stuff. So you guys get the point. If you know what Fortnite is, you get an idea of the gameplay loop of Apex. One of the biggest differences to me, and this is why I think it's pretty fun and probably why you like it so much, is it's a first person shooter and it plays a lot like the Titanfall games did. Um, yeah, that's why I like it. And it feels really good. The guns feel good. I mean, it's. It's got that same level of high quality first person shooting experience. It's a combination of my two, probably my two favorite first person shooters. I can't think of anything better than these two, but it's it's in a battle royale platform, but it's Titanfall gameplay with Borderlands like skills and craziness. Yeah. Um, so it's got those two things that I like about it. Like each character, which is, it's kind of like Overwatch too. Each character has, you know, a special uh, ability. Well, they have two. They have like their like ultimate power type thing. That yeah, they have one they can do pretty power. regularly. Like if you're and the healer. Have that, right. Yeah, you have one that you can do pretty regularly. Right. And they're very diverse. Uh, so no character really feels the same. Um, and then... There's a bunch. It, then it plays like uh, Fortnite and and PUBG as far as you go out, you loot uh, everything, and you find equipment, you find attachments for your guns and armor for your head and your body, all that stuff. Hold on a second, Eli. You can't. Please turn that off right now. I already told you. I'm recording. You can't have anything with volume. Do you understand? Turn the volume down. Besides, you're supposed to be laying down laying down for bed. Come on, I gotta get through the show. I did. Alright. Well, because I don't trust you. I you're the type that will just start watching a video when I start talking again. But anyway, so it's it's both those games, Borderlands and Titan. Titanfall, which are two of my favorites. Of course, one of the big differences being you don't truly get loot that upgrades your character. You just are picking up guns each mm -hmm. round, right? So you start over each round, but yeah. that's kind of the fun of it, to be honest with you, because for some people, okay, that's why I don't love these kind of games I've discovered. This is the third battle royale type, fourth battle royale type game that I've tried to play. I've tried Fortnite, PUBG, uh, Blackout for the new Call of Duty game, and now this one. Mm -hmm. And I see the appeal for some folks, but I'm like, I want, for some reason right now, I want permanent progression. I don't necessarily even need a story, but I just want, even like in the Call of Duty multiplayer, I want some kind of permanent progression stuff that I unlock that's mine that I can choose to use in the next round. And and uh, the appeal of it 
just isn't there for me, the Battle Royale appeal. But I will say this, Apex Legends is a great surprise release. By the way, getting tons of good reviews. It's got a 91 on the PS4 for uh, Metacritic right now. I think 85 on Xbox One. Those will probably both shift around a bit. Um, so anyway, it's getting great reviews. People love it. I can see why. But if you aren't into the gameplay format of Fortnite, if it's not so much about the third person or the cartoony look, if it's just that drop-in Battle Royale format that bothers you, you're not going to like this either. That no. being said, it is free. It won't hurt to give it a shot. You can jump in and try a couple of them. Like most multiplayer games, especially this one, because like you can go online and play like competitive multiplayer like Call, Call of Duty and Battlefield. Yeah. And you can play it solo and you get what you get. This game is really fun with teammates. Like I played probably five hours yesterday, which again, I've talked about my gaming time. I don't game a lot. And the only reason why I played that long was because I was playing with my pastor and his son. And so it was the three of us were playing for like three or four hours and then the sun left and we picked up another one. He's like, pastor. I should probably be prepping for my sermon, but let's nope. do a couple more rounds. He, he, he stayed on until like 11 o'clock. So we, we played for a long time and it was just the fun of like just playing with him and working out strategies. And they like, that's what they play. They play call of duty and Fortnite and all that stuff. And so he even told one of his friends, he's like, you love call of duty. You love Fortnite. You're going to love this game. Give it a shot. And so his friends started playing it and he was learning the game last night. So he'll probably be pretty good yeah. next time I play with him. Yeah. But that's the fun of it is working yeah. together and and kind of finding the characters you work well with. Right now, the, probably my favorite is the chick with the healing abil ability. But I did buy one of the new characters with the EA access money that I got. Which one did you get? Did you get the toxic guy or the, re yeah, the guy who came I want toxic because okay. my pastor got Mirage, okay. which is the decoy guy. Yeah. And I probably would have gotten Mirage. But I figure that's pointless because I'm going to be playing with him a lot. And so he's going to keep picking Mirage, which means I would never be able to use him. So I went ahead and tried. Oh, to that's another thing, guy. too, around starts. And if you put on a squad of three or whatever, mm -hmm. however many are in your squad, it's then three, yeah. you it's a it's randomized order of who which who gets to pick what character. So you don't get to, if they pick Mirage, for example, and, and you're in number two or number three spot. Too bad for you. You have to wait for another round to grab him. So yep. which is good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It kind so of forces you to learn a couple. It forces you to learn a couple different uh, jobs, you know, because each one is you got the medic, you've got the stealth person, you've got the sniper, you've got the uh, full on assault, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, they do a good job of mixing up the jobs. I, I I do, I do see why this one has a lot of appeal. I also think because this game was announced, released within like forty eight hours, that it didn't have time for folks to be too negative about it. They had to just jump in and play it because when, when you've got so much time between announcement and games release, all these conversations can happen that can like these assumptions start building and hype goes way up and then way back down. And there's all this time to build and they start questioning like, why is this free to play? Why isn't this just a full $60 game? And why didn't they include a campaign? Forget about all that stuff. They just dropped the game without really much ado at all and it is already i think it's already vying for one of the most popular uh battle royale style games right now i think the the audience for this is huge so i thought it was a pretty smart move even if it's not something that i'll play ongoing and i'll talk about another game that i tried the beta of that's the kind of more the kind of game i'm into um but anyway i liked it, it sounds like you're enjoying it and you've got some reason to to go back to it a few times yeah i think if if i didn't have like a crew I'd probably play it like I played Titanfall 2 and stuff like that, which is I play it for about 8 to 10 hours, get tired of it, and never go back to it. Yeah. Um, but I think if they consistently play, which I know uh, they play Fortnite a lot, but he's kind of getting sick of Fortnite, so he was like, I really like this game. I'm like, well, if you play, I'll play with you. So yeah. um, if I see him on, I'll play, and I'll keep playing it. But again, February 15th is coming. And I'm not talking about one or two games. Like I think I, if I end up buying Crackdown Two, because I actually canceled my pre-order until I see some feedback on it, I might just even go with the Game Pass option. Yeah. I've got, I've got Crackdown Three, Metroid Exodus, Anthem, 
and Far Cry 5 all coming out that day. Yep. So to consider Kingdom Hearts 3, Apex, Red Dead Redemption 2, I just have a bunch of games that I should be playing. I just don't see them mattering once yep. February 15th. Yeah, comes. so February is a very, very busy month. And then, of course, March is busy too, but there's a game that I am now more excited about than I was before, and that is The Division 2. So if you remember, for The Division 1, I played it for a little while, teamed up with a few of you guys for a little bit, played it solo for, I probably put 15 hours or so into that game, which is just a fraction of what you could put into it. There's lots to do. But -hmm. I remember getting to the point where I thought, you know, I feel like it's not quite where I want it to be. Maybe I'll come back. I never did come back, and I kind of wish that I did because I know that they upkept that game and, and people really loved it. I saw the Division 2 reveal. I thought, this actually looks pretty cool, and I want to give it a shot. So I fired up the beta over the last couple days. I've really, really enjoyed it. I'm up to level 6, and uh, I'm having a blast with it. I think the upgrade system is just as great, if not even better, than I remember it being. I, I like the visuals this time. I know some have said the visuals aren't great. I'm playing it on the 1X, and I think it looks pretty good. I'm not saying it's the prettiest game of the year or anything like that, but I think it I looks actually- fall into the category I thought it so like what what am i missing is it is it because i feel like it looks and here's the weird thing like i just bought the division on the xbox one x like it was ten dollars and i had three dollars in microsoft so i paid like seven bucks for it i think okay. i bought it two or three weeks ago that game's native 4k and it looks good it looks good this one for some reason i'm like Everything looks like, and keep in mind, the Division 2, the little bit I've played, there's more going on in the Division 2 to me than the Division 1. For sure. Like, there's just more more people out and about. There's yeah. just, you can tell The, more the environments are much more detailed, whereas in the Division yeah. 1, there was a lot of gray, a lot of gray. And now it's, there's still, of course, gray because you're it's an urban setting, but mm-hmm. there's garbage and all sorts of stuff everywhere that just kind of... I don't know. To me, looks a little more like, hey, I, this is how I think it would look. I think it would be like stuff just strewn all over the place. And I th- I find it to be kind of detailed. Now, the characters don't look good. The, the, That's my issue. Like, I Yeah, create, the characters don't look good. Create. I just did like a random one and it popped up. It looked like a Top Gun version of Sasan. And I was like, <laughs> this is my character. That sounds amazing, first of all. That sounds fantastic. I mean, uh, but no, you're right. The character models don't look good. I, I feel like we've I feel like we've hit that with games now where it's we expect environments and lighting and stuff like that to look pretty good, but the characters are the hit or miss for a lot of games. You know, something like yeah, Red Dead. So if we're focusing on the world, I wouldn't yeah. say the world looks bad. It's bland yeah. to me. Um, yeah. Not as bland as the Division 1, but still yeah. bland. But I would say the character models. Character models aren't great. There's certain cut scenes where I was like, yeah, they don't look that bad. But the ones you're actually playing it, it's like, ah... Okay, they don't look great. And it also, of course, is the beta. So I've hit a lot of glitches. I hit a couple of different audio glitches where the my gun stopped making any kind of sound, but every, my footsteps and everything else was still making sound. And then all of a sudden, I heard my gun, even though I wasn't shooting anymore, just shoot nonstop for like a minute straight. Things like that. And then, of course, the audio just glitched out altogether. So I was playing in silence to finish out a mission. So it's very glitchy. I've seen... You know, characters standing awkwardly on the top of a railing when they're supposed to be, they should have loaded up somewhere else. There's, it's it's glitchy, and I think that's that's probably to be expected with it being in beta. Um, so hopefully they'll iron out some of those for, for the actual launch. But I have found the, uh, the loot and upgrade system, and by the way, there's stuff to loot everywhere. Every corner you turn, there's something to loot. Um, and many enemies will drop stuff for you. The loot and... Uh, and upgrade systems are so fun. That's that's one thing I do love about these is they truly are an, they are RPG games. And um, even though no, it's not one headshot, one kill. Okay, this is not Rainbow Six. Mm-hmm. I still feel like if you have good enough aim, you can take enemies down relatively quickly. Uh, not not counting some boss characters and stuff, but most of the foot soldiers. It doesn't take much to bring them down. So it feels a little less bullet spongy to me. Maybe my memory is bad. I don't know. I like it a lot. I'm glad that I've got it, and I'm looking forward to playing it in March. And uh, so, yeah, I, I do like the division too. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think yeah. I'll enjoy it. I did put maybe an hour and a half, two hours into the beta um, to get a feel for it. It feels like the division one again. I know that sounds like a negative 
you genuinely, genuinely, when you have a sequel, they play like the original. I just didn't feel like it. The little bit I played, like they upgraded it all. Like it just felt like the Division One Point Five. And I was like, okay. And that's probably a fair. That's probably a fair criticism of it. I will like say I that their their cover system, their cover system, and the movement between cover uh, thing that they have is some. It's one of my favorites in third person cover based shooting. I really like the way they do their cover system and and all that kind of stuff. I think it's a lot of fun. But you're like right. It, yeah, it does feel similar to the first one. And, uh, and it gives me the SOCOM vibe. Obviously, the only difference is, you know, it's more RPG mechanics, whereas, like, Ghost Recon should be the one that makes me feel like I'm playing SOCOM, but this one feels more like SOCOM than, than Wildlands for some reason. But anyways, I do like the, the way the game plays. Um, I like the... I like everything about it, but I wasn't like blown away. I was like, ah, oh, this is Division 1.5. I'm way more excited for Anthem than I am the Division. Well, I keep in mind, I still really haven't done anything with Anthem. So I'm going to be going in pretty blind this weekend, and I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to it. Now that I don't have to wait for two weeks, I'll get access yeah. to it early, thanks to you. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, I will say this. The, the division- if we don't have issues... If we don't have issues, right? Correct. Really don't know what's going uh, they, to, to their credit, Ubisoft has said that they were really putting the division to, to through its paces technically, and so they they are encouraging users to essentially shut it down and restart it every hour or two. Like they're not saying to expect a smooth gameplay experience. They are both with their real users and with bots, they're trying to really stress the servers out to see how they can re- respond to stuff during the beta for when it launches. So to their credit, to their credit there, I think they're trying to make the launch smooth. I don't know if it's going to be, but they did put something out like that on Twitter. Um, just wanted to mention that too. Good. All right. So a couple of news items, we already talked about respawn launching uh, apex legends, really interesting way to do that, by the way. And I think apex legends is going to be talked about, for the rest of this year as a, as a game to keep in mind. Um, speaking of division two, they are going to have a photo mode. Um, I didn't try it out, but I did see there's an option where you can say, if, you know, cause obviously you can't pause the game. You're in a, a living online world. And so if you get hurt while you're in photo mode, you can either tell it to stay in photo mode and finish out your picture. Cause you don't care if you die or you can say, bring me out of photo mode. So for those of you who are wondering how's this going to work with a game like this, that's how they're going to do it. And it is supposed to work similar to Ubisoft's other recent game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a pretty good photo mode, I thought. So yeah. um, an update on another game that I'm playing a little bit, which has gotten really tough, by the way. Uh, I'm in I'm in like the third act, and it's really tough. But Wargroove, um, they did so well, mo- and primarily on Switch is where they're selling most of their copies, and I think PC they sold a lot. Um Wargroove covered its total development cost in just three days. And so that that developer is pumped and they are planning because to... the game looks like 50 cents. So Yeah, so that's how they were able to cover it in just three days, which is great. Um, so they are planning a whole bunch of a whole bunch of updates, fixes, some things that people are like, yeah, that's this this part isn't the smoothest or whatever, as well as additional content they're planning on putting out for that game. So they are pretty pumped for that. And lastly, one of the weirdest announcements that I still don't have a lot of details on. I don't think I want to dig into it tonight either. We can talk more about it later, but Microsoft announced their plans to bring Xbox live integration to Android and iOS. No surprise there. I feel like we already knew that. And Nintendo switch. I don't know what this means. There, there's some talk about how this is basically going to say, Hey, games like Minecraft that are technically Microsoft games, um, you can earn achievements for your Xbox Live account if you're playing on your phone or on the Switch, things like that. You know, and if PS4 were ever to acquiesce, which I know they won't, you could do it there too. But the idea is to allow your activity on other platforms to be seen by your Xbox Live account. Again, the idea that you your Xbox Live goes anywhere you go. And if you like to play on Switch, fine by us. You can still log in through Xbox Live on your Switch. That's what I I think that's probably the direction it's going. Um but boy, it makes me start wondering, are Microsoft and Nintendo going to get so friendly over the next few years that we'll actually be able to play some sort of Xbox Live anywhere? Can we stream Xbox games to the Switch at some point in the future? Like, how crazy would that kind of stuff be? So don't know that they'll ever get that friendly. But with Nintendo 
kind of playing the game of, yeah, we're not really competing with those guys and Xbox playing the game of fine. Sony doesn't want to play nice. Nintendo will. And it's just interesting. It's just a weird time. It's a weird time. <laughs> so it'd be pretty cool if you could, uh, if they ever got to a point where they work together so much that they would allow, you know, you to play Nintendo games on your Xbox. Let's yeah. What if, what if there was a 4k version of Mario, you could fire up on your one X and also a portable version of Crackdown 3 you can play on your Switch. I mean, that just sounds insane to think about, but that'd be crazy if they figured yep. that kind of thing out. Who knows? It, this could be as simple as an app that's on your Switch that allows you to you know, track your achievements through Microsoft games. And so I'm not sure how Nintendo benefits from that. So maybe there's more to it. I, I don't know. All right. Moving on, I want us to wrap up with our top 10 must-own PS4 exclusives. So I want to give people a list. I know there's some people who most most of our listeners own a PS4. I'd say about half of them probably, maybe a little less than half, own an Xbox One, and about that same number own a Switch. PS4 is our, I think, most played console for the Fathers yeah. of the Grind community. So I wanted to start with this one. We I do plan on doing the other consoles in the future as well. These consoles are th- four years, right? Four years into their life cycle, something like that, um, or no. more. Than- they came out in late 2013, so they're past five years. Oh, five years. They're more than five years in. So they're, I mean, we're getting to the point where we're all waiting for the X, you know, PS5 and Xbox 2 or whatever they're going to be. We're waiting for those next console announcements. And so now's a good time to look back and see all the goodness that either you're a new PS4 owner or you don't own one yet and you're thinking about getting one. So I want us, they, we don't have to rank them. We're just going to create a list of here's the 10 that you, if you get a PS4, you mm-hmm. must own these. If you already have a PS4 and have skipped some of these, shame on you. You need to play some of these. So I, I jotted down there for you to see too, Derek, uh, some of the exclusives that I could find. I just did a quick search this afternoon to, to fill out the list a little bit. I had most of them. Um, but here's what I've got, and help me if I'm missing anything obvious. We have Astrobot Rescue Mission, Bloodborne, Detroit Become Human, Everybody's Golf, God of War, Gravity Rush 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, Infamous Second Son, Kill Zone, Shadowfall, Knack 1 and 2, Marvel Spider-Man, Moss, Nino Kuni 2, Neo, Persona 5, Pyre, Ratchet and Clank, Rezo Gun, The Last Guardian, The Order 1886, Uncharted 4, Uncharted Lost Legacy, and Until Dawn. Now I'm leaving off we're not, we're not doing like um The Last of Us or anything like that. So I'm leaving off Last of Us and Shadow of the Colossus because they aren't technically games that if you own a PS4, you must own them. They're they're yeah. great. They're really, really beautiful uh, versions of already awesome games. But you can own Shadow of the Colossus on two other systems. Okay. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Because if if we were, The Last of Us would definitely be on my, my list. Yeah, and I would have put Shadow of the Colossus on there too. Yeah. Um, I but, wouldn't have put you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and Last of Us, of course, I would, have, I would have been in agreement with that. But since those are not included, if we were to uh, must own for PS3 – we could include it on there and then maybe say, Hey, if you got a PS4, that's the better version. But since we're not doing that, let's talk about, Oh, this is 20 something games. Which 10 of these games will we put on? So let's just go one at a time. You can go first. Uh, let's, there you go. I'll just highlight the ones here that we are saying are must own on the PS4. I would also include that on my list. I think if you are an action RPG fan at all, and if you like a good challenge, just give it a try. I'm telling you, just make it to the first boss and, and just be patient with those first few areas as you learn how to, how to lure the right enemies away and, and battle through them. And once you get strong enough, it's a really satisfying game. It's the game that makes all other games easier. So if you can get through it, it gives you the confidence to play other games and it makes everything feel easier. Yep. Yep. All right, I'm going to pick one of the big games from uh, 2017, Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that is an absolute must-own if you've got a PS4. Beautiful open-world RPG and uh, very, very unique. I highly recommend it. So probably my second, probably my second favorite PS4 game, um, God of War. Yep, easy. I mean, this was our pick for Game of the Year last year. Yeah. Um, amazing reboot of that series i think it was a great way to restart that series okay one second here 
Sorry, I have to respond to a wife text. Okay, uh, so you picked God of War. I'm going to go with Knack. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with... I have to pick Uncharted 4, and I'm going to bundle Lost Legacy with that because I do think they're similar and connected experiences. I mean, I know that it's fair to consider them separate games too, but I'm just going to bundle yeah, them together. Yeah, technically it was part of the season pass, so you could say, hey... If you bought the season pass, the $80 version, this game came with it, so it's like DLC. Oh, and I'm assuming now you could get them together for super cheap, although I haven't yeah. looked. I'm, I'm assuming you can get them for super cheap. So Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy, some of the best, I think, storytelling and character development in games. Really fun uh, for all the knocks that Uncharted 4 had from its longtime fans of the series. Still a high-quality game, and regardless of whether or not you thought it was the best Uncharted, uh, I still think it's worthy to be on the must-own list for PS4. All right, I'm going to go with Spider-Man. Which, by the way, they, they keep pumping out more DLC for that, more additional stuff for that. Which yeah, is I'm awesome. just waiting for it to go on sale, and then I'll buy it, like the DLC pack. Yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff there. And when Into the Spider-Verse uh, came out, the movie, which is great, by the way, the, they, I think they put out some other additional DLC stuff, so it's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to say Detroit Become Human. I'm going to get away a little bit from the action-adventure genre and go with the strict storytelling genre. I think Detroit Become, Become Human is a, is a must-own game if you have a PS4. It is a wonderful showcase of how video games can tell good stories. Usually video games struggle to do that, but in this case, it does a great job of telling a, uh, at, least, at least compelling character development uh, type story. What else would you put on there? So we've got... One, two, three, four, five, six. We got four more. All right, uh, Neo. All right, I found Neo to be just as fun as Bloodborne. Um, I still like Bloodborne better, but I still think Neo is a really, really good, difficult, very difficult game. Would I found you it actually be harder? Would you put this one above your Dark Souls experiences? Any of them? No, but only because. I don't think the world was as interesting. The combat's phenomenal. I loved all the loot. Like the loot is like Diablo, but it's a little overwhelming. My biggest issue with it is like they kind of load you into a level and it doesn't feel like as open like you would get from like a Bloodborne or Dark Souls or something like that, where you actually feel like you're in a universe or a world. Whereas Neo almost feels old school. Like you go on a map and you go, I want to go here. And it just loads you in this level. And then once you complete that level, you can pick another level. And then, I didn't like that. I, I wish it was more like connect, like a connect the world, like Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I didn't love the, the way you would go out to this kind of weird world map and then go into an area. I didn't like that as much. That's okay. It's still a good game. I've talked on the show before about how I was surprisingly impressed by neo even though i fell off of it huh I was say, did you beat that one i didn't no. remember no i didn't i didn't but i did enjoy it I, I put a good amount of time into it i did enjoy it some really cool boss battles that i saw of course the opening boss is named derek which is so fun to kill derek over and over again yeah i know um <laughs> um all right so this one's a little bit tough i do want to include some sort of uh platformer um, if you have VR, it's without a doubt Astrobot Rescue Mission. If you don't, which most of you don't, and that's okay. I'm not saying it's worth buying the whole VR set for, even though I do think it's good. Then I would go with Ratchet and Clank. So I would say between those two, those are both really high quality um, kind of mascot platforming games with some fun combat. Uh, I would say Ratchet probably has better combat because it's got some crazy guns. But Astrobot is really, really clever and charming. Um, more so than Ratchet and Clank is. So they're both really good. I would put Astrobot on the list with the caveat that if you don't have VR, get Ratchet instead. So that's what I would say. All right. So this last pick is really hard because if I was going to do it based off of like what I think everybody else would want me to put on the list, it would be Persona 5. Yeah, because you know um, I'm not going to add that one. And I'm not going to. That's why I'm saying it. Sorry, Ooh. guys. I know that's what you want. Um, but that's not a game that I loved. I thought yeah, it was okay. Shush, Eli. And I told you to turn the volume down. <laughs> um, the other two would, it comes down to Infamous Second Son, which I beat that game twice, or The Order 1886. And again, if you go based off other people's opinions, you don't pick The Order 1886. But I love, I loved 
the order eight. I'm still disappointed they haven't made a sequel, to be honest with I you. I really wish they would give it to another studio and create a sequel. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with my last pick, the order eighteen eighty six. Yeah, that's one I was eyeing too. I'm not I wasn't sure if I was gonna include it or not, but I and I really enjoyed it. I mean, sure there's some issues with that. Ah, the shooting and cover based stuff isn't as good as it could be. The traversal felt a little clunky, but overall fine. And it was gorgeous. Really pretty game. Um it had so, a good story, and the universe was interesting, and it ended in a way where you're like, please create a sequel, and I don't think we'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in a similar situation. I've got one more spot here. So we've got Astrobot, Bloodborne, Detroit, God of War, Horizon, and Marvel's Spider-Man, uh, Neo, The Order, and Uncharted 4 as our nine so far. So this one's a little bit tough. Like I haven't played things like Everybody's Golf and Gravity Rush 2. I'm sure they're great, and they would add some variety to the must-10 list, but I haven't played them, so I can't sit here and pretend like you should play them. You can totally skip Knack 1 and 2. Ratchet and Clank is a much better platforming, kind of family-friendly experience, and so is Astrobot, for that matter, if you've got that system. Um, I'm looking at the one you were just talking about. I'm looking at Infamous Second Son, one of my first PS4 games that I owned. And I really, I really, really big one that I was excited for. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I know, again, it got some mediocre reviews, but boy, did I enjoy it. And the other one I'm thinking about, hey, buddy, hey, I got a visitor. Uh, The other one I'm thinking about, come on, come on, is The Last Guardian. And I know, listen, I know you don't love it, but it it is, since we don't have Shadows of Colossus on here, it is an interesting one. I got to go with Infamous Second Son. Like if I were to choose right now, if someone asked me which of these two should I play, mm-hmm. I would recommend Infamous Second Son unless I knew that person really well and thought, you know what, Last Guardian is right up your alley. Like you, you're into kind of off the wall anime, kind of weirder stuff. What well, you know, get the Last Guardian. Infamous Second Son just has universal appeal, and it's high quality. And if you get that, make sure you play First Light. A great deal, kind of similar to Lost yeah. Legacy. It's standalone, but it, it's par- kind of part of the package, and it's it's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. There's our 10 must-own game exclusive PS4 games. Astrobot, Bloodborne, Detroit. Oh, sorry. I've got a uh, an alarm that just went off. Um, Astrobot, Bloodborne, Detroit, God of War, Horizon, Infamous Second Son, Spider-Man, Neo, The Order 1886, and Uncharted 4. That's a great must-own list for PS4. So if you're getting a PS4 or you already have one and you've skipped some of those games, those are the ones that you must play. All right, so that does it for us for this week. I know we've got more, a lot more to talk about next week. So I'm going to let us go so we can both enjoy some free time before February 15th arrives. And we are both, I hope we both find time to play some of these games. It'd be very yeah. disappointing if next week we're like, yeah, I didn't have any time to play. So I just played more Rocket League. Oh, and just so you know, uh, Metro 2033 comes with metro exodus so you have access to that on the xbox one x that's the first one i think you should at least check it out when you're okay. not in the mood to play kingdom hearts or something just see if you like it, like the game come here buddy come here all right you did a little baby it's okay hey look look at yourself <laughs> hey who's that right there look 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 hello <laughs> Hello. Oh, he wants the microphone. All right, we can cut the show off. Say All right. Hi. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, thanks so much for talking. You guys, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises?